Today, we will introduce the spiritual message from Helen Keller. Her words, shaped by her experience of overcoming the hardships of blindness, deafness, and muteness, are filled with profound wisdom. Please listen until the very end. I am currently in a very beautiful place in the heavenly realm, by a serene lake with breathtaking scenery. Being in a place like this, it often feels as though I forget everything that happened or occurred on earth. When I was living on earth, I thought I had gone through many hardships, but now that I have returned here, I feel as if those moments passed by in an instant, and I'm filled with the realization that they were not a problem at all. My heart is always clear and at peace. Rather, I now see the hardships, the painful experiences, the frustrating moments, and the anger I felt on earth as moments filled with wonderful radiance. I have come to realize that such experiences are not something I could easily go through again, even if I wanted to. Knowing that these experiences happened because I came to earth makes me feel that my journey has been truly extraordinary. Through those experiences I believe I learned and gained so much. Being born with various challenges is something that is pre-planned, and whenever one overcomes a challenge, there is always a goal in mind. We are born into such environments with a clear purpose and objective, having carefully made our life plan. Although there may be cases where some are born with challenges through less proactive plans, most of the time it is part of a flow of spiritual training that has been prearranged by the soul. Each person's mission is different, but in most cases, they have a clear and definite goal. It is, of course, about learning for oneself, but it also extends beyond that. By showing others how to live in such circumstances, one can give courage, bring joy, and provide comfort to many. There are various reasons why we choose to enter such lives, but it is often only possible to make such plans from a very high soul level because it is extremely difficult. No matter how challenging life may be on earth, when we return here, we clearly remember why we made such plans. And if we can achieve those plans or even surpass them, the sense of accomplishment and joy is tremendous. Every life, no matter what kind it is, always has meaning. In most cases, it is something we ourselves planned. Some may go through certain experiences for learning or to atone for past karma, but even that is part of a life plan meant to help them move forward. So, I want you to know that no matter what the situation is, life exists for us to improve, and reality is there to help us do so. There are also those who plan to lose their lives at around five years old, or even shortly after birth. I believe that even these events are often part of a predetermined plan. When you think about it that way, it becomes clear that every experience we undergo is for the brilliance of the soul, for a better life, and for the advancement of the soul. I truly believe this brilliance is a gift from God, filled with mercy and love. I believe there are many people now living on earth, enduring difficult circumstances, or living with disabilities. To those people, I sincerely want to share this thought. Your current reality is something you yourself carefully planned before you were born on earth for the sake of your soul's improvement. Please think of it this way. There is no need to feel despair. I understand well how difficult things can be and that there are painful moments, but even so, if you live your life to the fullest, when you return to the heavenly realm, you will be able to look back on your life with a clear and uplifted heart. So, I want you to live with courage and hope. Believe that your soul is that great, and that you are bravely taking on this challenge. I shared these words today in the hope that they will inspire and encourage many of you. I sincerely wish that you continue to move forward with the brilliance of your soul. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, Ms. Totoro, do you have any questions? My daughter, who is now 25 years old, has Down syndrome. Due to certain circumstances, she is currently living in a facility. She has a severe case, and I've heard that about two or three times a month, 
She experiences nights where she doesn't sleep at all. I'd like to know if this is a characteristic related to her physical condition or if it could be due to some spiritual influence. Also, if you could share any words for the staff working at the facility with many individuals who have severe disabilities, I would be very grateful. What I have shared with you earlier reflects the general overview of the subject. However, regarding individual cases, each situation is unique and personal, so it may not be appropriate for me to discuss specific details about your daughter in this public setting. I believe it would be more appropriate to discuss such personal matters privately. As for the overall perspective as I mentioned before, it can be said that people are born with certain disabilities or characteristics, as you may call them, to overcome specific challenges. I don't believe there are many spiritual influences involved in your daughter's condition. Since I am not conducting a spiritual reading right now, I cannot provide specific insights, but I generally believe this understanding is accurate. And the more severe the disability, the higher the hurdle, which suggests that spiritually, the individual is of a very high level. Although I do not know how much your daughter herself is aware of this in her current physical existence, I believe that her soul fully understands the situation and knows that she is progressing according to the plan. When she returns to the heavenly realm, she will immediately remember all of this. Regarding the staff at such facilities, I think that those who work in such environments have a special connection. Many of these individuals might have had previous incarnations where they themselves experienced disabilities or unique characteristics. Having gone through those experiences, they have now returned to this world to take on the role of caregivers or guides for others. This can be seen as a form of advanced spiritual training. However, in the third dimensional world, if their thoughts stray from the right path, they may need to start their journey all over again. Therefore, I believe it is crucial for them to live their lives based on the teachings of God, as this is the correct way to fulfill their mission. I believe the staff members are individuals with highly advanced souls who are going through these difficult stages of experience. Many such people exist in these settings. I hope this answer is helpful to you. Thank you. I've heard that you encountered Emanuel Swedenborg in adulthood, embraced the Christian faith, and later awakened to the spiritual world. I'd like to ask if this is true. Did such events really take place? Yes, that is correct. Rather than saying I awakened to the spiritual world, I would say I was spiritual from quite an early stage. I didn't know how to recognize or express it, but now I realize that what was happening within me was deeply spiritual. As I grew older I encountered such individuals, and by embracing faith, I believe I was able to communicate my situation more clearly to others. However, it is true that I was always immersed in a spiritual worldview as a natural flow within me. I want to emphasize that for a long time, I struggled to understand how best to express it. Without being spiritual, I may not have been able to fulfill my life. Therefore, I believe that people in similar circumstances can also see the world happening within them as deeply spiritual. Thank you very much. So, Ms. Rocco, do you have any questions? Thank you. Although it's not the same type of disability, it seems that recently, many children are being born with developmental disorders. I believe there are spiritual reasons for this, but I also think factors such as food or the environment might play a role. For children with developmental disorders, even though there may be physical reasons in the third-dimensional world, do you think they are also spiritually choosing to be born with these conditions? Additionally, could you offer some words of guidance for parents who have children with developmental disorders? I don't view children with various conditions or symptoms as having developmental disorders. It seems that the term developmental disorder is used according to certain guidelines from the human perspective, but I don't think of it that way. While some might see it as a disability, I see it more as a characteristic. I believe it can be understood in both ways. 
either as a disability or as a broader characteristic. While there are various causes, I think that many children labeled as having developmental disorders are actually going through experiences where both the light of their divine spark and the shadow aspects within them become very clear. This seems to be a common feature in children who are labeled as having developmental disorders. I don't see this as something negative. People use terms like diversity, and the range is so broad that it can't be defined in a single way. But I believe that all people, each with their own individuality and characteristics, come into this world with specific purposes. Among these children with special characteristics, there are many who exhibit exceptional talents. Many of them are, for example, artists. I believe that people with such outstanding abilities come into the world with the purpose of experiencing what they do. In cases where developmental issues arise due to diet or other environmental factors, I think it's because they are meant to go through a different kind of experience. Even then, it's not in vain. There is a reason and cause for everything, and that's why they find themselves in their current situation. So, human souls really possess countless lights and unique characteristics, and everyone is different. To measure these differences against some standard and judge that those who don't meet it are somehow defective is, in my view, not a good approach. I believe these children are going through very profound experiences. Thank you very much. I am truly grateful for your answers to the questions. Additionally, after hearing today's discussion about individuals born with disabilities, I feel a deep sense of respect for them. I want to change my perspective and approach them with this newfound understanding. Thank you very much for today. How did you feel after watching the video? When I heard the story of Helen Keller as a child, I was filled with a sense of awe, wondering how difficult it must have been to endure the hardships of blindness, deafness, and muteness. I imagine she must have gone through a great deal of suffering, but what left a lasting impression on me was how, now that she has returned to the spiritual realm, she speaks of it as an extraordinary experience, one that she couldn't have had again, even if she wanted to. However, just because I've heard these words from Helen Keller, I don't think it's appropriate to tell someone currently living with a physical disability, you're having a wonderful experience right now. There are people whose disabilities are visible to others, and there are those who silently struggle with challenges. But regardless of the difficulties each person faces, their courageous efforts to tackle the challenges life presents are truly admirable. In this sense, I believe that all people are equally given the opportunity to grow. That's all for today. Thank you for watching. Please stay tuned for the next video.